Hey everybody, today on the channel we are gonna make over this cute little desk right here. Stay tuned. Hi everybody, my name is Kristana and I am the owner and artist behind Bella Renovare by Kristana and this is my YouTube channel. So today I'm gonna show you how we have transformed that this desk into what it is right now. And so if you guys are not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell for all the latest information and everything we use will be in the description below. So let's get started. I wish I was above the center of attention, but I'm not I wish I didn't have to give in to the pressure, uh oh mm. I'm posting pictures, trying to be someone I'm not It feels just like I'm lying to you I fake it, stage it, trying to live some perfect life I know I'm wasting time Cause I just wanna call my friends and see what they're doing tonight It doesn't have to be so special I try to be myself, you do the same and we'll be alright finished sanding the legs and the bottom of this piece i will strip the top and sand this next i want to change the hardware on this piece and so i'm going to plug the holes and the first thing i do is i open the drawers and i actually put a piece of tape at the back of the drawer and that way when i do put my wood filler in it stops where that paint is so i'm going to put tape on the back of all of these because i'm going to fill all the holes on this side i've been dreaming all night Bringing me some inspiration Never meant to love no one But baby I saw you for a second and I'm happy that you came my way Don't wanna waste no time without you ever brightening up my days Never meant to fall so hard
Okay, so I have stripped the top of this and the legs down and later on what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a white stain on it. But for now, I'm going to paint the body of this with sawmill gravy. So I'm gonna paint the body of this with sawmill gravy because I want some of this white-ish sawmill gravy to show underneath when we distress the top coat. Okay, so I wanna show you how I'm going to do stripes on this piece. So I've painted the entire piece in mint julep and this is what we're gonna aim for right here. So I'm gonna do stripes on this one and this one in sea glass. I don't think I'm gonna go all the way down. So I'm gonna do sea glass on this one and this one. So I'm gonna show you how to take off for stripes. So we're gonna pull this out and I'm gonna tape all around here. Okay, I'm gonna butt right up against this and tape it off. Okay, so the next step is to actually put the tape going vertical. What I like to use is I like to use a piece of tape to guide me. And so I'm going to put my first piece of tape and I'm gonna line it right up against the edge of that, this raised part. And I'm gonna push it down. And that is where it's gonna start. I'm gonna burnish that tape down so we don't have any tape or paint that seeps underneath. And I'm going to do it on the ends too. Then I'm gonna take this piece of tape Wait a little bit closer. Then I'm gonna take this piece of tape, push it on right there, push it down right there, burnish it just so I know it stays straight. I'm gonna take another piece of tape, put it right up against there, rip it off, and I'm gonna pull this one up. We're gonna burnish it down, make sure, and then we're gonna continue that process all the way across this drawer.
Okay, so I've moved to the side and I decided I'm gonna do some stripes on the side. So I wanna show you how I do it on a larger area. I'm gonna take three pieces of tape. These are gonna be my markers, okay? So I'm gonna do one kind of in the center. And this allows me to not have to measure out my stripes. So here's one right here. Let's move it over a little bit like this. Sorry, I had to move it over a little bit. Move it back. Okay. So we're gonna put this one right here. Okay. Now what I do is I take a piece of tape and I'm gonna do it the length of this side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna butt it up against each individual marker and that will help me keep my lines straight. So I'm going to take it, put it in place, burnish it, and I'm gonna pull it down and I'm just going to tap it in place right here. Before I actually burnish it down, I'm gonna tap it in place. I'm gonna pull it down and I'm going to tap it in place on the bottom. I'm gonna rip it off. So hold on. I'm gonna tap it in place on the bottom right there. We're gonna burnish it. And then I'm gonna burnish it down the rest of the way. I'm gonna pull these pieces of tape off and continue the same thing all the way down this piece. So again, put a piece there, put a piece here, and then put a piece here. Before we move on, I wanna show you something. So let's move this really quick. I don't know if you can see how this is not really lined up and it's not pushed against there. So anytime you don't have your tape flat against an area or a 90 degree angle, it could allow tape to come through or paint to come through. So you wanna pull it up and I'm just taking a, a paint scraper. You could take a card, something like that. I'm gonna push it down so that it is nice and flat in that 90 degree angle. So this one as well. And this just helps you later on. So you're gonna push it down in that 90 degree angle and it helps you later on if you can see how it's better on there. And this one still actually has a little bit. It's at the, this is at the corner of the piece, so sometimes that's difficult, but no, there we go. So you want it to be really nice and snug up against that 90 degree angle so that you don't have any paint. You need to make sure you remember to do that as well up here. So you're gonna push that up and then it's flush. So we'll pull these ones down just to make sure. And you can actually do it while you're putting your tape on so you can get the tape and like, let's say that you're putting this tape on like this. You can actually guide that up there already. That way you don't have to go back and pull it off. I think that one was good, but I just wanna show you. So you can guide it up and kind of flip it up. And these are super easy, guys. You can get these at the hardware store, you can get them from Dixie Bell for a few dollars, not even a dollar, maybe 50 cents. So I'm gonna continue that on the entire side and we will come back. So the next step, I have put tape all over this piece. The next step is to go over it with sea glass. So everything is taped off and now what I'm gonna do is go over all the areas that are exposed with some sea glass. The first layer I do, I, so I'll do one layer and then I allow it to dry. And then when I do my second coat, I will pull the tape off while it's still wet. I'm gonna pull my drawer out just because if I get any kind of splatter, it's gonna be lighter and then I have to go over and go over the, the mint and I don't wanna do that. So I'm just going to kind of lightly go over this. Don't worry about going over the tape. If you've burnished it down really well, then you shouldn't have to worry about any tape seeping. If you wanna be extra careful, you can just kind of take your brush and only stay within that area. If you feel like you have good enough coverage on your first coat, which you may, you may be happy with it, you don't have to put a second coat. So because I'm putting the sea glass over top of this mint julep, 
it is covering it really well. So I can actually probably pull this off. Once I'm ready, I'm actually going to pull my tape off and you want to pull it off gently. That wasn't that gentle, but pull it off gently. Now, if for some reason you have any area that maybe paint pulls up, which it shouldn't happen, but sometimes different tapes are stronger, you can go through and you can fix that with an artist brush. If you do end up getting any kind of bleed through underneath, like there's a little tiny spot right there, you can use that. You can use an artist brush to fix that as well. I'm actually gonna be distressing this, so I'm not too concerned with it. Cause I want this to kind of be like an old carnival look a little bit. So I'm gonna pull it all off all around. And I'm also gonna be putting wood you bend around this. I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. So I'm pulling all of this tape off. There we go. So I wanted to add a little bit of trim on here so you can see that I have the wood you bend trim and what this is is the rope trim and if you've never, there it is, ah! it's the rope trim and if you've never used wood you bend before it's really awesome. So what you're going to need is either a hair dryer, sorry, so if you've never used wood you bend before it's really awesome. So either you're going to need a hair dryer or a heat gun for this. And I'm going to show you how you're going to attach it on to here. So I did it on this one and I'm going to do it on this one. And I think we're going to leave it that way, but I'm going to show you how to attach it. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is you're actually going to heat this up. I used the hairdryer to heat it up earlier and I'm going to heat it up again because it has since kind of settled and I don't want to break it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat it up so I can set it up against my drawer and see exactly where I need it. So you're just going to heat it up and I'll show you how it flexes. So once you heat this up, you can see it becomes more flexible. The more you heat it up, the more flexible it is. You can go around corners and such. We're not going to go around corners. So all you want to make sure you heat these up prior to it, because even though they may look flat, they're not. And so when you heat them up, it allows you to push it up against the surface. And so then it sits flat. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to heat this up Get a little bit closer. I'm going to heat this molding up. Once your molding is heat, it's heated up and warm, you're going to put it where you want it. So I'm going to put it right here at the edge. I still want to see some of that distress show through. So what I'm going to do is it's kind of like if you've ever, for these corners, if you've ever cut trim for a room, you're going to want to cut them at an angle. 
You're gonna wanna cut them at an angle and that way, so I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and the warmer it is, the easier it is to cut them. So I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife, I cut that at an angle and that way I'm gonna cut it at an angle to connect these. So I'll show you that as well. So I'm going to tape this in place for now because what we're doing is fitting these before we actually rewarm them and glue them. And so let's see, it's fitted right there. I'm gonna to continue to heat this up. Just to make sure that it's sitting flat. And I'm not super concerned about it sitting totally flat right now. I just wanna kinda of get an idea of what it's gonna look like when you are ready to put your paint on or you're when you're ready to put your glue on that's when you want it to be super flat so again we're going to continue to heat it kind of push it down put some tape there This is a heat gun, so I'm trying to stay away from the paint so that it doesn't bubble up. Because if you get too close, it will bubble up. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how we're gonna cut this end part. Okay, so we're gonna heat this end part up right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut it at an angle. And that way when we cut our next one, it should, it would be the other way, but it'll butt up against right there. Okay, so now I have dry fitted my wood you bend. So now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna start in each end. I'm gonna take this, have my tape up here. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna move this over a little bit. I'm going to put a thin line of wood glue right here. You don't need a ton. And I'm actually going to spread it to the edges so that way when I heat it up and I push it down, those edges will stay down with the glue. So I'm going to stick it on there. And I'm gonna heat it up. And when you heat it up, it does that one final so it's sticking right to it. So I'm gonna take my tape, I'm gonna push down with some pressure and make sure that it's in place and that it is pushed down. Now, if you have glue coming out on the side like this, you can just wipe it off, you can get a rag, wipe it off. I'm gonna push that down and that way it's secured and it's gonna dry. And I'm gonna do that on the entire piece. Okay, so I'm going to show you, I want you to see all the white wax. So I'm gonna white wax this so that the wood is still gonna stay blonde, but it's gonna have some white accents on it. And then I'm going to go over certain areas with white and we're just gonna accent this with white wax. So I'm gonna show you how I did this and how we're gonna get this look. Okay, so I will be doing this on the entire piece, but what I'm gonna need, what you're gonna need is your Best Dang Wax in White, and I have a wax brush, whichever is your favorite. And I had stripped this down because I like the blonde wood. I do wanna accent these areas right here with some white wax. So we're going to put this on, and I'm just going to go ahead, and I wanna make sure that I get really good into those areas. And I actually want 
You can over wax it because you're gonna wipe back the excess. And you wanna get underneath so that you get these little cracks too. So you wanna make sure you get a, a neat angle. Pop my head back here and <laughs> make sure I got it. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just take a rag and I'm gonna kind of wrap it around and go like this. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna take the wax off the raised areas, but it's gonna keep the wax in these little crevices right here. And if you feel like it's not in the crevices or you wiped it away, just add some more wax right there. You don't have to do it that way. You could also do it like this, where you just pull it off the raised areas. And that way you can control where that white wax goes a little bit more. So I'm gonna do that on the entire piece. Okay, so the next thing I wanna show you is how I like to white wax the top of raw wood. So again, this is maple, and if you can see, I have a squirt bottle there. So I'm using Dixie Bell's wax, and Dixie Bell's wax is water-based. So I personally like to mist the area down. That helps the wax glide a little bit better, and then I put the wax on, and then I wipe the wax back and then I will let it sit for about 15 minutes and then I buff it. So it allowed us to put some white wax on there, lighten up the wood a little bit, but keep that blonde wood still. So again, this is after I went and buffed it just with a rag 15 minutes after. And you can with Dixie Bell products, I may put some gator hide over it. You can put Dixie Bell's clear coats or gator hide over their wax. They're designed to work together, so I probably will put some gator hide over this as well, just because it's a desk. So Dixie Bell has a brand new product coming out in fall, and it's their mousse line, and there's actually six colors. And what I'm gonna do is just add a little tiny bit on top of this molding, just to give it a little bit of character. I'm gonna use my finger, and I'm just gonna ever so slightly go over it just for a little tiny pop of color. You can use an artist brush if you'd like, you can use your fingers. You see how it glides on. So it's not quite a gilding wax, but it's a mousse. And this is their gold. It's the gemstone mousse, so they're all named after gemstones. And that was super easy. A little bit goes a long way. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Here is the piece right here. And I'm gonna show you a couple little pictures of it that are staged. And then I'm also gonna show you a little video I went around it because the back is actually painted as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you are not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell and you'll get all the latest videos. Everything I use today will be in the description below. So you can just click on those links and then it'll take you right to where you need to go to purchase it. So thank you guys so much again and happy creating. So here's the piece. 
completely done. And here's the top. And this desk, sorry, the lighting's not that great right here, but this desk is one that doesn't need to be pushed up against the wall. So I even did the back. And last but not least, here is the side. <laughs>